I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Rupert Wyatt, Executive Producer of Apple TV Plus's dramatic thriller The Mosquito Coast, on which he directed the show's first two episodes. Rupert, first of all, I'd love to know how you became involved in this show, why you decided you wanted to get involved and adapt this very acclaimed novel by Paul Thoreau. Well, I, I um, came to it um, first and foremost as, a, as the director of, of, the, of the initial episodes of season one. So um, in, in the sense that I, I adapted it, I came on board um, obviously sometime after the development of the show um, that, was, that was overseen um, by Neil Cross. So, um, so I received his scripts um, for episodes one and two and um, just fell in love with them. I mean, I knew the book and I knew the film, the Peter Weir film. Um, I was intrigued by the update in, in so far as, you know, Neil's contemporary approach to it, um, both thematically and narratively. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I took to it like a duck to water in terms of understanding very early on um, that I would, would have an opportunity to do something that felt, you know, very close to home for me, which is, you know, tell a story of a, of a man who rages against the machine. It's sort of something that I've long been fascinated by from the storytelling perspective. A lot of the films I've done have kind of um, followed that path uh, for, for whatever reason. <laughs> um, and so um, it was appealing uh, on that level alone, but then obviously just knowing that we could be very ambitious uh, with our scope, um, uh, the support that we had to achieve that from Apple and Fremantle was, was clearly there. And just knowing also that I could work with an actor like Justin Thoreau um, was, was immensely appealing. So, so yeah, all, all of the pieces um, added up to an incredible opportunity. Yeah, I can see why you would have taken on this project. I mean, when the novel was uh, first released, it was in a very different time to what we're living in now. And what I really appreciated was how the show was brought into this new kind of era, so to speak, and was also quite ambiguous. A lot of the show, all the motivations of the characters, we, the audience, just don't know and don't understand. And that's a little unnerving and, and, and slightly frustrating because I want to have all the answers immediately because uh, I'm so greedy. But I'm wondering why you think it was better, you and Neil and the rest of the team, it was better to put the audience in the dark and let us go on a, we'll kind of flee the country with the Fox family and then kind of figure it out as we go along. Well, I can't really speak uh, hand on heart. I can't speak for, for the show beyond the end of episode two in terms of the choices that Neil made, because ultimately those are his, his decisions alone to make. And, um, you know, very, very, uh, very much, you know, the, the, the first two episodes were, were where my attention lay. And so um, what really intrigued me about what he'd done is he'd created a kind of Chinese puzzle box of, of, uh, of a mystery. Um, he was putting at the, at the, at the feet of, the audience and the reader, in, in my perspective as the script reader, uh, a lot of questions as to who these people were, their relationships within the family unit, their relationships with the outside world, their relationships with, with modern American um, values, um, uh, technology. And then gradually he, he, he started to feed in um, certain kind of, I guess, Easter eggs, you could call them, of information and, and, and not in, not in necessarily kind of entirely answering those questions, but giving, giving us a sense of, um, of, of an engine for, 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 on which to jump on and, and, and kind of go for the ride. And one of the key things that Neil did early on in the adaptation, which I think was a kind of hallmark of the show's success in many ways, is he, he transitioned from um, the novel's perspective, which is a patriarch, um, a dogmatist, um, who unilaterally chooses and decides to sort of uproot his family and take them on this journey down to the Mosquito Coast. Um, his belief there being the new Eden and it becomes anything but. And in the case of the adaptation, um, he, he sort of ripped that choice out of Ali Fox's hands and, and, and made it much more of a, a fugitive narrative. 
And um, I think from, from just on a pure basis of pure stakes and drama, it gives us, uh, a, a, it's, a, it's a legitimately excellent, for me, it was, it was one of the great um, uh, 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 appeals of, of taking on this show is it immediately set me off on this journey, this notion that, you know, this is a family that have kind of a wave at their back and, and they're, they're on the run. And whatever lies ahead is, is the obstacle in the way rather than, you know, the adventure of the unknown. And so um, I think that that was something that the first two episodes sort of set up and then where it goes from there um, and the questions that are continuing to be asked and the, where Neil is making the choice to give you the answers, I'll let him answer. <laughs> yeah, he had a similar answer. His answer was also about, oh, because it's just better drama and I don't want to tell you all the answers. So, I mean, he's, he's a pretty funny guy. Um, you know, like most TV series, Rupert, um, you're one of a number of directors, as you've mentioned, collectively bringing the vision to life. Uh, on this show, you directed the first two. So your contribution, though, is quite significant because you're helping to establish the visual style and the emotional tone of the show and the, and the world building. So I just I would love to know from you, um, talk us through, you know, the specific pressures of taking the reins on a series pilot and the second episode. It's challenging, you know. I mean, it's 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 like I, I've I've likened it in my head to a little bit like being a tailor rather than a clothes designer. Um, you know, you you any 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 storytelling within the kind of realm of of of, of filmmaking or television streaming, um, you know, it's a collaborative process. That's first and foremost. It's it's uh, the auteur theory of of uh, of European cinema and. And filmmaking is, in in a way, a bit of a fallacy in 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 contemporary um, in the in the contemporary sense. And and I don't say that in any cynical way. I just say it in the sense that you know, it takes a village to to tell to tell stories uh, with the ambition of modern day filmmaking. And um, so, um, the collaborative process is is key. Uh, being able to sort of function in a way that you're yes anding people and. Uh, working with a, a group of like-minded souls. And I was fortunate in the case of Justin and the cast to have absolutely that and, and uh, being able to sort of, you know, get our arms around it and really sort of try different things and, and um, find the tone of the character, find the tone of the scene. And um, But it's, at the end of the day, I think, you know, the most important thing for me is to know from the script that I'm aligned with... Um, the creator in, in this instance, Neil, um, and he's tonally a very deft and strong writer. So I think um, I could tell immediately that his choice when to come into scenes, when to leave scenes, really matched my gut instinct. And so um, it felt it felt like we were very much aligned before we even met in, in real life. So um, so I think you know to know that as as a pilot director. Um, albeit, you know, there's more than a pilot director. I was the first two, but sort of set this set set this story off on its journey, and to know that I can do that, faithful to the expectations of other people, is is really important. Um, mm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would just imagine you're taking on the you know the directing duties for a show that you know a team have put together, uh, but they've conceptualized that you are the one that has to actually deliver it physically. And I wonder if there's anything in particular from episode one and two that you found the most challenging to actually bring to life on screen. Yeah, I think it was the Fox's isolation. I mean, that, that's the first thing that springs to mind just on a, on, a, on a visual and tonal and physical location level. We were shooting outside of LA, um, even though the story is set in Stockton, Northern California. So, um, we had to find a farmhouse that was emblematic of this character, this, this family's isolation and the notion of being off the grid and self-sustained and surrounded by bucolic farmland, but in a way, just a stone's throw from the kind of tidal wave of modern America. And I'm sure if we all kind of describe that to each other, we'd all have this notion of in our heads of what that might be, but it's easier said than done than finding it. And, um, and uh, it took a while and actually finding the farmhouse that we ultimately shot in was to me the, the moment where I thought this show could work just in terms of what I would be able to, to, to contribute. Um, 
because I knew immediately that I had a, in a way, a principal character of, of the opening episode um, alongside the family within which they would inhabit. So, um, yeah, that was that was a massive challenge. And actually, you know, these are these are the things in a way that shape a show and the success and failures, I guess, to an extent, which is we had three or four other possibles. They kept on falling through. They weren't quite right. This place was there, but it was lived in by a guy that didn't necessarily want to move out. And, you know, it's, it's all of those things that are quite mundane and boring, but actually are so impactful upon the ultimate success of this show. Absolutely. Um, you know, when I spoke to um, Melissa George, she credited you actually quite a lot for the, the way in which she was going to get into this particular character because the Margot Fox character is quite elusive, mysterious, and we, we soon realise there's more to her than meets the eye, particularly given that when we first see her, she's on the phone with her mother, um, sounds quite devastated and alone and um, worried, but then she seems to snap into other personalities um, as we go through the series. And I, I'd really love to know um, what... What were your thoughts on trying to flesh out this character that is not very fleshed out in the film and is different from the character in the book? Yes, I mean, she, that, that's a good, you, you make a very good point. She's very different from Mother, the, the kind of the matriarch of, of, the, of the book's um, family unit, insofar as she's, she's, she's more sort of bonny to, to Ali Fox's Clyde. They're, 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 they're partners in crime, Maybe not literally, but they they um, they have a kind of equal footing in a way in terms of the relationship and the dynamic of how they oversee the family. They have different strengths and different weaknesses. And you know, first of, I always think, and it's something that I learned from from um, watching a documentary. Uh, I love watching documentaries about other filmmakers and hearing them speak about the process. And William Freakin. I think was, you know, it's, it's not a unique philosophy, but it's certainly a very helpful one that, you know, once you get the casting right, um, you just got to give the actors their wings and, and, and then, you know, act as their mirror. Um, because as long as you get the right actor um, for the tone and for the, the intelligence of, of, of the role, um, it's really about then leaning upon their, their own talent and their own instincts. And so I found that, very much so with Melissa and, and with Justin and, and, and the kids with Logan and, and Gabriel very much so that I, you grow to realize with certain actors that the, there are those actors that really do their homework. Um, and it's not even homework that they necessarily discuss with me, the director or Neil, the showrunner, but it's their own approach to the character. It's them figuring out the beats of scenes and then you can see, but you begin to see it when, when on the day you're working with them, you begin to see the through lines that they're, they're making. And um, nine times out of 10 with, with having made the right choice of actor, you, you, they're making a choice that you yourself would, would want to, you know, it's a note that you would want to give them. Um, and I noticed that very much with Melissa. She's, as you said, she plays multiple personalities very well. She, she dipped into different um emotions very quickly according to the situation of different scenes and and it brings a real zeal and strength to that character and you can't quite put your finger on her as a result as well but she's she's a fabulous actor in that sense she's very grounded she's very real um she can thankfully with neil's writing it, it wasn't an issue but you know she's this kind of actor that you sense she can take a sometimes a woolly line of dialogue and you know deliver it make it work and 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 i think it takes a particular kind of performer um, and brain to be able to do that so so yeah. yeah and um i mean with the uh, margot character in particular there there's you know there's a lot of really great action sequences and some tense moments but i found the most telling was the dancing scene to the you know the morrissey song chewy um which I, was just a fleeting moment of abandon and happiness and to my eye, I think everything is intentional. A director is and writer is putting everything on the screen for a reason. And I just would love to know your thoughts on bringing that particular scene to life because it really is quite effective. Thank you. Yeah, it's it it's it was there on the page, obviously, but it was clearly important to exist and get right emotionally. Insofar as it's the first time we really see a 
a union between mother and daughter. Um, you know, it's it's funny because the way the the relationships are set up in the story at, at first blush, you kind of consider Gabriel, Charlie being closer to his father, you know, idolizing his father, but actually you begin to recognize uh, maybe maybe he's actually more more like Margaret, more 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 kind of um, more of a romantic, um, and Dina is the more scientific minded, uh, the one who's closer to Ali. And, and so it was just an opportunity in many ways to see these, these, this mother and daughter relationship and bring them together. And just this, 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 as you say, this moment of abandon, um, and ultimately just to cut, to cut the, um, to cut the, 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 the feeling of what might be coming next, the eye of the storm moment. Um, so, um, yeah, it was, it was about, you know, my, I gave very few thoughts on that on that day i let the music sort of in a way drive them but it was all about having fun that scene yeah and it's just so beautifully coupled obviously with the the more tense scenes outside in the desert with the militia men and uh the inverse um uh immigration to mexico over that perilous border um yeah. was that sequence as difficult to shoot as it looks because it just looked like it would have been quite perilous out there you mean the shootout, the, yeah. the militia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a tough. I was I was fortunate in so far as I didn't really have to cross a desert like uh, like Jeremy, uh, the director of episode three, did, um, <laughs> uh, and Guillermo, the DP, and 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 everybody else. But um, but it was my I was on the on the edge of the desert with that scene, and we shot it down in Mexicali on the on the U.S. Mexican border. Um, and it's it's tough out there. I mean, I don't know if you heard this, but we we saw, um, we thought it was, uh, I can't remember what we I think we thought it was like a a scout or something like that coming right through our frame when we were shooting. And it turned out it was um, two two coyotes, two two guys leading some illegal immigrants across wow. the area where we were shooting, and they got lost. So our security went over and. You know, gave them some water and helped them out. But it, but it really was. We were right there in the borderlands, and um, you know, we, thankfully we're 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 privileged and, and fortunate. We we didn't have to suffer anything like most people who have to cross that desert. So mm. we had the infrastructure and the support. But um, but at the same time, it's it was a challenging shoot for sure. Yeah, and I think it's that particular sequence where the us the audience realize, okay. This this show is not really going to um, pull any punches. It, the stakes are quite high, and I imagine as the director, um, it was important to really ramp up the tension there. So it was yeah, it was a really effective scene and beautifully coupled with the dancing one. Um, my final question is about um, Justin. Uh, you've mentioned casting. Casting to a show is uh, so critical. On this show, it was it was actually done right. Um, he's got a personal connection, obviously, to his uncle who wrote the novel. But what's what are his strengths as number one on the call sheet? Um, because I can't imagine Ali being played down by anyone else but him. Yeah, he's 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 not somebody I knew personally. I knew his work, and I was a huge fan of the Leftovers in particular. And just I also knew him as a writer. You know, one of my favorite films is Bizarrely, um, not Bizarrely, but it's just very different to this. But Tropic Thunder. Um, yeah. I just, it's just a classic and and just I, I i had a hope and it was borne out for sure when i met him and started working with him that you know as being a screenwriter uh, there are certain actors and some that i've worked with um work with an actor andy circus and he's very similar and he's now directing and it, so it kind of makes sense there are certain actors that really see 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 the see the the, the project in macro and then there are some that just really devote themselves to to their character and then neither is right or wrong they're just different ways of approaching and justin has that ability to sort of look at things from the outside as a storyteller not just as who he's playing ali fox in the in the in the show so he's a he's a terrific collaborator in that sense on set he he he's a, he's a crutch for any director i think he's somebody that you can really lean on um and and you know he has extraordinary strengths he's He's a very, you know, and it's, I'm sure, I'm sure you hear this often because uh, people are always polite about other people, but I say this with 100% sincerity and, and genuineness. It's like, 
you know, the, when you're spending 15 hour days with people, it's a real privilege to spend that time with people that you actually like and get on with, have fun with, because it's really hard once you don't. And, um, and I would say with somebody like Justin, you know, he's number one on the call sheet. So he, he brings a, he brings a, a vibe to the set that really helps everybody um, from, you know, technical crew to, to the other cast. It, 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 he really kind of keeps everybody's spirits up and, and, um, and he does it with absolute focus. You know, he's, he's, he's always focused on the work at hand. So um, I, I, I had a, glorious time working with him from day one from working together going over the scripts to um you know talking about stuff that was happening in the edit um he's a he's a terrific partner yeah and you can i mean such a responsibility as number one on the call sheet as we've said to bring a, a, a vibe to the set so that it will work and the same goes for the director and on that note rupert thank you so much for your time congratulations on a really strong first two episodes thank you man thanks so much good to talk